Praise the Lord. It is a great privilege of mine to shepherd this flock for the great shepherd. And I greet you once again in the lovely name of Jesus. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 1. Throughout the Bible, we see that the Lord uses many different ways to communicate to us what He is like. And uh, Ezekiel had a vision of the Lord, visions of God, visions from God. And uh, we are looking at that this morning and uh, an aspect of God that will no doubt be comfort and strength to you, uh, perhaps one infrequently considered. Ezekiel chapter 1, it came to pass the 30th year in the fourth month in the fifth day of the month as I was among the captives by the river of Chebar that the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. The scriptures go on, and I won't read all of these, but out of the midst, uh, verse 4, I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, and a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of fire, of the fire. Also out of the midst thereof came out the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. Every one had, every one had four faces. And every one had four wings. And their feet were straight feet. And the soles of their feet were like the soles of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings and on their four sides and they had uh, they four had their faces and their wings and their wings were joined one to another and they turned not when they went and they went every one straight forward this is strange isn't it verse 10 as for the likeness of their faces they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side and they four had the face of an ox on the left side and they four also had the face of an eagle. Our Father, we pray just now that you would speak to our hearts. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to appreciate you, though we may not understand the full depth and implications of this passage of Scripture, we pray that you would quicken to our hearts some understanding. Lord, help us to understand what you are like, who you are, and what you can do for us. We thank you today, Lord, for the fellowship that we enjoy one with another and with you. We give you praise and we acknowledge your presence in the midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The Lord bless you. Verse 10, as for the likeness of their faces, they, had, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side. And they four had the face of an ox on the left side, and they four also had the face of an eagle. In Deuteronomy chapter 33, there's a similar reference to the ox. Verse 33, Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 17. His glory is like the firstborn bull, and his horns like the horns of a wild ox. Speaking of the Lord. Together with them, he shall push the peoples to the ends of the earth. They are 
the ten thousands of Ephraim, they are the thousands of Manasseh. When two oxen are yoked together, they will walk together in unison. They will walk as one, as if they have one mind. They stand together and they pull together. The two oxen are held together in this wooden structure called the yoke. The yoke is a heavy wooden harness that fits over the shoulders of the oxen. And the yokes guide and keeps the oxen headed in the right direction. The ox may resist the yoke, but usually they are quick to adjust to it, and he learns that the yoke always lightens his load. The yokes were made to adjust to the size of the oxen, and they were made to fit well. Great care and great carefulness was made in the crafting of a yoke. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Come unto me, Jesus said, All ye that labor, <laughs> all you that labor, that means to work hard or become wearied, Come unto me, all you that labor, that work hard and are wearied, and heavy laden, he says, or if you're overburdened, Come unto me, he says, and I will give you rest. Verse 29 of the same chapter 11, Matthew, Take my yoke upon you. He draws on the metaphor that was introduced not only in the book of Ezekiel, but also in Deuteronomy. He says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek, and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. He goes on to explain why in verse 30 he says, For my yoke is easy, it fits well, and my burden is light. The ox, the oxen exude an oil from back on their shoulders. God made them just to be a beast of burden. He made them to carry the heavy loads. He made them with the right equipment. And in their shoulders where the yoke sits, they exude an oil that softens the wood, that makes it pliable, that makes it a comfortable thing for them. He softens the wood around the neck and their shoulders uh, and it makes it comfortable. And at a certain point of growth, if the yoke is not adjusted, because the oxen is growing larger, if, it, oxen, if the yoke is not adjusted, it will break the yoke if it's not changed. But God is not only the owner of the yoke in this metaphor that we consider today. He's not only the owner of the yoke, but He is also our yoke fellow. In this yoke that we may be harnessed to, there is another oxen on the other side. Not only does Jesus say, my yoke is easy, he's the owner of the yoke, but he says, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. He's not only the owner of the yoke, but he's also our yoke fellow, and it is God that we are yoked to. He's not the man behind the team, although he is that too. He's not only the man behind the team steering, but he's also yoked to us. It takes two oxen to describe the role that God plays in working with us. He's not only our judge, but he's also our advocate. <laughs> he's our mediator, and he's the one with whom we have to do. Who shall condemn? It is God who justifies. 
And we are supposed to, we are supposed to yoke together with God. And he is the stronger one of this team. You are in a team with God. You're yoked together with him. But he is the stronger of the team. Our problem is that we have not learned yet that we are not supposed to have everything figured out. Our problem is that we are not supposed to have all control. He is the stronger of the two oxen. We are the weaker of the two. We are yoked together with him. He says, learn of me, trust me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you are going to find rest for your souls in this yoke. We are not supposed to have it all figured out. Can you say amen to that? <laughs> oh, there ought to be some comfort when you go through life's twists and turns, down this road and down the next. You can't always know what's around the next corner. You can't always have all the answers. You can't always have it all figured out. Sometimes, Brother Robert, you just got to wait on the Lord. Sometimes you just got to wait until the understanding comes to you. And sure enough, if you hold to God's unchanging hand, the answer will come in good time. You'll understand it better by and by. Hallelujah. We are yoked together with God, and He is the stronger one. We are supposed to learn His ways. We are supposed to trust Him as we go down this road together. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 4, where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. Now think about that for a moment. Paul said, I planted, Apollos watered, but it's God that gives the increase. <laughs> I'm preaching to you this morning, God the ox. God the ox. And I don't mean that in any irreverential way. <laughs> I mean that with the greatest of affection. I, I mean that with the greatest of honor because he is the strong ox in the team that we are hitched to. My friends, God, hallelujah, is the source of our increase. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean. But much increase is by the strength of of the ox. Not only does the increase come from him, but much increase comes from him. The oxen are for working, and the oxen are for plowing, and for pushing, and for pulling. They were made for this kind of work, and it is through his wonderful strength that we have won, hallelujah, that we have won any and all battles that we have won. It's because we are hitched to God the ox, and he is pushing ahead, and, and he is helping us each step of the way. The Israelites were fleeing one day toward the mighty Red Sea. They were running away from the mighty Egyptian army. There was absolutely no way for them to make it out alive. But God the ox said, I'm going to push the waters out of the way. And when the enemy follows behind, I'm going to push the waters back. Hallelujah. This is the God that we serve, my friends. You need not be concerned that, his, that he's unable to meet your circumstance. Much increase is by the strength of the ox. Hundreds of false prophets one day, the false prophets of Baal, and thousands of backsliders were against one little old man of God. But God the ox said, send down fire from heaven. Hallelujah. And so Elijah got the answer, hallelujah, that he prayed for. Oh yes, my friend, God the ox is there in the, in the harness with you and I. He is our yoke fellow and he is there to supply the need of the hour. The Jordan was chilly and muddy and overflowing in its banks. 
But God the ox pressed back the waters and the people of God went through to the other side into the promised land to fulfill his will. The lady was a poor widow and she had a boy to feed and there was no doubt days or weeks from death but God the ox said, I'm going to break some natural laws here to feed you and to make sure that your needs are taken care of, that you have what you need. Hallelujah. And this prophet, and, and she said, uh, she, he said, uh, you go ahead and, and feed this prophet. And she and her son lived. The kid was promised from God. And when he was in the field one day, he cried, my head, my head. And he probably suffered from a heat stroke and died on his mother's lap. But God the ox said, Hey, hold on, death. This woman's been faithful to me. <laughs> she has blessed my kingdom. Death, you back up a few steps now. I'm going to push you back. Push them back. Push them back. Push them back. Way back. <laughs> oh, yes, the death angel was at Hezekiah's door. He could hear him knocking. <laughs> but the old ox said, I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. We're going to give him 15 more years to serve me. <laughs> oh, yes, because of faithfulness, you see. People tried to bind him with chains, uh, but the man with all the demons could not be calmed. But God the ox came on the scene and he said, you better let him go. Hallelujah. He's got a work to do for me. He's a chosen vessel in my kingdom. He had laid on his bed by the magical waters waiting for the troubled the troubling of the water so that hopefully somebody could help him get down into the pool. The pool of Bethesda. Huh. The sheep man at the sheep gate. The, sh the, pool, the sheep watering place. And, and he said, I don't have any man to help me into the water that I can get my healing. <laughs> But the ox, God the ox, comes along and says, Wilt thou be made whole today? Hallelujah. And he pushes back his infirmity. He pushes on through, hallelujah, all of the excuses, all of the things that have held him back. And, and he brings his miracle. He brings his answer in a time that was so needed. The man was so sick that he had to be carried by four men and they couldn't get in for the press. So they went up on the rooftop and they began to tear the roof apart and they let this man down with ropes down before the presence of the Lord. Ha <laughs> ha. And God the ox said, rise, take up your bed and walk. Hallelujah. And the man was healed. Hallelujah. The woman had a bad disease and she had spent all of her money on doctors and she grew sicker. But God the ox came on the scene and he pushed back. Hallelujah. And he made a way for this one who had spent all that she had on the physicians. Old blind Bartimaeus was a beggar. Had the people against him and he had the disciples against him. Everybody was against him. But God the ox pushed him back. Hallelujah. God the ox made a way. Hallelujah. And healed this man who was born blind. There were thousands that were very hungry. And the disciples said, send these people away. <laughs> but God the ox. There's not, a, and by the way, there's not enough food here to feed them. We're out here in this desert place. <laughs> and God the ox said, oh, by the way, thanks for telling me. I created it all anyhow. I know what we're at, where we're at and what it's all about. 
Oh, yes, and he created another meal. Hallelujah. He created a meal to feed the 5,000. Lazarus was no different, my friend, for he was dead and in his grave. It was hopeless. There was no brain waves. There was no heartbeat. There was no inhaling. There was no exhaling. But God, hallelujah, there was some decomposing going on. But God the ox came on the scene and put death in his place. Hallelujah. I'm talking about our yoke fellow. I'm talking about the one that we are teamed up with. God is on our side. He is our teammate. Hallelujah. And come learn of me, he said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light and you'll find rest for your souls. God's people were thirsting to death and the water available was bitter. But God the ox said, throw something in this water and it'll be healed. And the water was healed. Second Chronicles 32 and 8, and with him is an arm of flesh, but with, 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 with us is the Lord our God. God the ox, hallelujah, if you will. That with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles for us. Hallelujah. You need not fear what life brings your way. You need not fear what kind of troubles you face today or what you might face tomorrow. My friends, take courage. Hallelujah. For the Lord said, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God the ox is on our side. And he is able, hallelujah, to push his way through whatever obstacles that we might face. Take courage. Be strong in the Lord. For he is our yoke fellow. Let's stand together. Our Father, we're thankful today for this message of encouragement, for this message of your power and for your strength. Oh God, we are thankful that you have not forsaken us, but that you are with us each and every step of the way, that we are tied to you, Lord. We are connected, harnessed with you, Lord, in the yoke. And though we may be working, though we may sometimes have a struggle, though we may have a load to carry, Lord, we are thankful that through this journey of life, Lord, that you are with us each step of the way. Oh, Lord. Take us, Lord, to new heights. Lead us, Lord, down through the fearsome valley. Lord, the fearful place that we would not go. Oh God, take us, we pray. Though you lead us through the valley of the shadow of death, Lord, we will fear no evil. For thou art with us. And we recognize your presence nearby. And we stand, Lord, in the confidence and the full assurance of your promises and in the provision of your strength. In Jesus' name we pray and we give you thanks. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in my father's house than to dwell in the tents of the wicked forever. One thing have I desired, and that will I seek after, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Dismissed in Jesus' name, shake hands and be friendly.